Hey guys, I am recording this at a hotel tonight. We recorded on Sunday night and had a good show, and of course there were computer problems. So I spent my flight today editing the show down. I think I got a good episode out of it. You'll notice a, it's not the best audio quality we've ever done, but I hope you still enjoy it. And make sure you get your tickets to join us at the Bay Sox on Father's Day. Sounds like a long time from now, but it's not. Get your tickets now, only 10 bucks, and I hope you enjoy the show. It's section 336, Matt, Josh, and Bird are at the game, sitting behind home plate. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Baltimore sports fans of all ages, welcome to Section 336, the next generation of Baltimore sports talk. I am your dearly stuttering host, Matt Sproka. As always, I'm joined by the zany Burt Rohde. What up, Coconuts? How are you doing? And the button lover, Josh Sproka. Hey, that endearing stuttering is going to take on a new a new uh, phrase now with, with Skype stuttering as well <laughs> for you. Double stutter. It's just gonna add. It's gonna be double, double endearing. Hey, over here in the Eastern Shore, you're lucky that we yeah. got internet at all. All right. I feel like Bert has like the cell number of Eric DeCosta and is telling him who to pick. Because I tell you what, as far as this, this is not your parents' Ravens team. Um, they're trying to be, at least attempting to be. It sounds like fast and exciting, and they drafted offensive players, um, some playmakers or potential playmakers. Um, Josh, I know you talked to Film Study. Um, how was how was Film Studies fe- fe- feeling about this draft? Uh, pretty good. He's a defensive guy, defensive first. But I mean, you got to acknowledge in the NFL we're transitioning to a a speed and offense happy league, and the, this draft clearly shows the Ravens want to be part of that. They brought in a bunch of more weapons for Lamar Jackson to work with, so it'll be interesting to see. There is a new film study where you can get all nerdy if you want to download that podcast and really get into the weeds with uh, Ken and Michael. Uh, Bert, how do you feel? The first pick, Marquise Hollywood Brown. Um, he's supposed to be a playmaker, super fast. It's the knock on him is he is a bit uh, petite. Um, and they're wondering if, he'll, if his body type will hold up at 175 pounds. Uh, Bert, what's your take on the drafting Marquise um, Brown with the first draft, with the first pick? I like any. I like anyone they can draft that already has a nickname. Less work for you. Uh, True comes built in, and uh, so Hollywood Brown is a good one by me. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, we've we've drafted wide receivers in the first round in the past, and none of it ever seems to work out. So uh, you know, just hope for the best with this one. Um, I like. I like that one of his uh, pros was that he is a known route runner. Because I feel like we've had wide receivers that don't know how to run routes. So I like that he's good at that. And hey, if he we can get, I don't know, 50% of his cousin into into the game out of, out of it, then it's going to be a pretty good wide receiver for the Ravens. No one expressed any concern that his cousin is Antonio Brown, who everyone agrees is a total nut job. Is, but there's no concern that his cousin is Antonio Brown. I, I think we're looking on the positive of hopefully he can catch and run the ball like Antonio Brown. Okay. Uh, not not hoping that the crazy passes on. Yeah. Because I don't know if that's – when people are mentioning that, I don't know if it was an attribute or a deficit. But, like, I don't understand what ESPN was doing. I was watching it on ESPN, and they had, like, facts whenever someone was drafted, which I thought was cool. But the facts were so random. Like, the fact for um, our, our boy Ho- Hollywood Brown – was that he was born two weeks premature. Like, how in, in that way is, like, what does that even mean to us? What are we supposed to do with that information? Because he's little. Is that why? Is that, is he's that little. He's two weeks behind. Is that That's what why they're he's saying? short. That's why he's so little? I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, give, give, give him two more weeks and he'll be a little taller. <laughs> no way. There's tons of preemies no, that grow up to be giants. I don't know. They're just stretching for facts <laughs> and something to make this person odd. Yeah, but that's a weird I don't thing. Know. I, I haven't done my Google search of what NFL players are It's not were even born like premature. two months premature, which is like insane. Two weeks, I think, is relatively normal. Yeah. That's within the window. That's normal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, 
I don't know how I, I'm not sure. I think it's a gutsy pick because of the size and of the history with wide receivers. Like it could not work out. And for Eric DaCosta in his first draft to go there to an undersized wide receiver, I think is gutsy. He could have went the safe way and picked an offensive lineman or whatever because he needed help there too. So I thought it was it was gutsy by Eric DaCosta. But on the other hand, I think the logic that you don't draft wide receivers because in the past you had issues with wide receivers and developing them, I think is BS. That's, that, if you use that logic for the Orioles, they would never draft a pitcher, right? Like you, you just can't ignore that part of the game, especially when it's such right. a weakness because Perriman did not work out. No, you got to keep on trying. And I'd rather them take someone in the first round who a lot of people had at the top of the board of wide receivers then take a fourth rounder, and then you have the excuse on why it didn't work out. Ah, they're just a fourth rounder. Take the best guy available, and then that's the position that you need. I like and, the, get, the, and give your best Instagram shot. posts and Twitter posts from all the current Ravens players. They seem to be fully supportive of Hollywood Brown as the first pick, and it, it just kept going with pick after pick throughout the rest of the weekend. Every single guy that came off the board, you saw the Twitter blow up with the current players, Marlon Humphrey, Lamar Jackson, guys like that who just are in love with it. And that just might be – you know, kind of they have to, but I feel like the, the Lamar Jackson Instagram post after Goodwin or Brown was picked uh, was pretty genuine. Uh, he, he, it was almost like he started speaking another language. Uh, he was very excited about getting Hollywood Brown. And uh, so, you know, that, that builds well for me. You know, if they want to <laughs> succeed and he feels like he's going to be part of Lamar Jackson's uh, career progression. Yeah, um, and Hollywood I'm all seemed for it. pretty excited too. He was crying. There were, there were tears. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be crying, boy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that was related to the two weeks premature thing either. <laughs> right. um, yeah, yeah. And we still don't know if it's crying because he was so happy to, or crying because he's going to have to catch Lamar Jackson's footballs. <laughs> He'll be doing a lot of blocking. But it is. <laughs> yeah, it is fun that the Ravens are like – we yelled for years that they never gave Joe Flacco uh, – proper wide receiver so it's nice to see them say all right we're investing in lamar jackson and we're also going to i like the jokes about uh the the broncos make sure they draft plenty of tight ends and dump off pass running backs because that's uh joe flacco's forte Uh, i'm pretty sure that's what they did was draft a tight end first (laughs) they did yeah they also drafted a quarterback so or uh, so this is going to be uh, just the same thing for, for oh, Joe. No. What, They'll start till what round or whatever. They, they better not get hurt. That quarterback pretty late, right? Yeah, the the Ravens chose like a quarterback in like the fifth round, I think, sixth round. Oh, no, okay, that was right. their, their final so pick, I believe. And and they and they said that that kid is athletic and he better be able to play special teams. And well, what they're trying to do is they're trying to do what? What's that guy in New Orleans for the Saints? Their backup quarterback, who's also like on the field a bunch, is a wide receiver and stuff. Oh yeah, that's what they're trying to do. Well, that's that's RG three, I thought. No, uh, it's what they were trying to do with Keenan Reynolds, but they never did. And now Keenan Reynolds, you know where that kid's playing? No, former Navy quarterback. No, I don't. Yeah, he's with the Seahawks. Oh, is he? As a wide receiver. Yeah, that's well. So, cool. We'll see. Well, it's going to be Lamar Jackson and RG3, and then this guy will be practice. Oh, I don't think so. I think, you don't I think, think so? this guy is getting on the field more than RG3. You think we're going to carry three quarterbacks? I think we are going to carry three quarterbacks, but only two active each week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think this guy is going to be active, and uh, RG3 is going to be there for just like last year, just like last year when – uh, RG3 was never really activated. From, from what I heard, it's going to be Joe Flacco. I mean, not Joe Flacco. Though they might trade back for Joe Flacco. <laughs> you got some bad info. You Joe got Joe Flacco. Flacco. No, they got uh, Lamar Jackson, and then RG3 is going to be back up. And this other kid's got to learn how to play special teams. And, that's, and that is true. They can carry three quarterbacks if one of them is playing special teams and wide receiver I always, and stuff. Because technically, I always consider, consider Cook um, to be our, our third string quarterback. That man always completes balls. <laughs> right. Always when he's once called a year. Ball. Good accuracy once a year. Yeah. All right. He, he's the Caleb Joseph, Chris Davis, whatever other position player has pitched in the last week. Yeah. Um, hey, Josh, when you were doing the film study show, I'm not going yeah. I probably won't listen too nerdy, but I'm going to ask you about it, about it now. Um, All right. Did you did? Um, and if you, you say yes to this question, I might listen. Actually, did did Ken McCusick give a grade? 
for the draft class for the Ravens? No. Okay, no. that's disappointing. No. I'm not going to listen. No, because he I won't. Only he read won't articles give articles or listen to podcasts that give grades. He won't give a grade until like he actually sees what the guys do. He'll <laughs> yeah, give a grade like mid season. That's typical film study. Let me see some film on them first right. before I give them a you grade. Mean he, yeah, he's not doing the whole winners, losers like everyone yeah. else is teasing. I want some hot takes here, and that's not Ken. No, no, he's hot not the Ken. type of guy to write an article about, hey, the schedule came out. That means the Ravens are going to go 9-7. and seven. Yeah. The, the, because it's hilarious, and it's, it seems to be tied to draft classes where the NFL draft, I feel like this is the only time when grades are huge. Right? Like, no other draft, I feel like, does this. But when we get to the NFL draft, every website has a grade for that draft. Um, and then I saw on Twitter, someone posted about all the picks the Ravens made. And then I looked at the comments right. just because, you know, whatever. I think it's hilarious. Like, two, two-thirds two thought it was the best draft ever. A third thought it was the worst draft ever. And it's just hilarious to me how people are making these proclamations about people we know nothing about. I just think it's hilarious. Yeah. And you don't know how they're going to transition. And you don't know what else the Ravens are going to do over the next month as they sign free agents. Because yeah. clearly there's – yes, they didn't get an edge rusher. But there's a few available that they can sign, and then they'll be fine. Yeah, th- there's so many factors into what determines a successful NFL player that you just can't look at some film and say, yeah, I know. And I get, like, people like certain players and fine, good for you, like your guy. But to be able to say – this is a bad draft class or that's a, a good draft class <laughs> now is, is it's, in, it's literally impossible, but everyone does it. Uh, yeah. You yeah. like, you like the Raiders being classic Raiders and jumping out in front, taking yeah, a guy that. who that's like, no one GM, had on the board too, all the time. It, it's yeah. It, it was, they were, was they had my favorite pick when um, they picked like Darius Hayward Bay yeah. like 10 years ago uh, with one of the top five picks. I love that so much. <laughs> that's still yeah. like my all time favorite draft pick Hayward Bay that high. You see, you see this guard that the Ravens took, uh, Ben Powers. Yeah, Ben Powers, Oklahoma, uh, the, yeah. the same as uh, Marquise Brown. That's the one that yeah. Mo Gabba picked. Yeah, Mo Gabba picked it, but did, but what was cool is when he got the call, Orlando Brown was at his house with him. Oh yeah. So. Nice. Oh yeah, there's a yeah. connection with Zeus too. So they too, put him yeah. on the phone as well. Yes. Yeah. So hopefully he's good. I've heard mixed things about him. Hope he's good. Hope he's a player. All right. Bert, you like the Ravens trying to jump on the Mo bandwagon? They can't use me. After, Orioles after guy. seeing all the good, yeah, all the all the good PR the Orioles got for pushing Mo, that now the yeah, Ravens yeah, jump yeah, on it. National Football League history, <laughs> reading in Braille. Yeah. Right, right. Well, remember the Orioles made history in Major Major League Baseball last year. With oh, that's right, the Braille jerseys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember, remember they wore the Braille uniforms. Which, it, which the more I think about it, it's kind of weird for somebody rubbing your chest to see what your shirt says. But, uh, Josh, this all starts, and you, you begrudge, and you belittle, and you smear the, the name of talk radio. But this all talked, and, and I mean, we, we love Mo. He's great, and I think it's so cool what the Raven Lords did. But <laughs> Mo got his career started as just calling in a 105.7 The Fan, and, and then it turned into the Orioles found out, yeah. and then the Ravens, and now he's well, everywhere. Yeah, and it all started with Scott and Jeremy, yeah. and that's the that's the one show we all like yeah. and enjoy. Yeah, and that's what yeah I, I love listening to Mo on there. But now, thanks to the Ravens, I heard Mo call into ninety eight Rock. Last yeah, I don't week. know if that was a normal thing. Like maybe it does no. Uh, with, the Ravens oh, okay. set it up. It was a it was a phone call for like for John Harbaugh to tell him that he'll be announcing this thing. All right, get into some Orioles talk. I got it. Alex Cobb's back on the injured list. Yeah, and you knew that Alex Cobb thing was coming because even he, before it, he came back, he was talking about he didn't feel 100%. So what are yep. you doing? Yeah, but he shouldn't have been cleared to pitch opening day. And then he, of course. Yeah, like everyone always says when they come back for injury, they're, they feel 100%, even when they're not 100%. But he like admitted he wasn't 100%. Right. But he just said he's going to do the best yeah. he can. And lo and behold, he's back on the, on the IL. That surprises no one. It's no. Um, yep. A couple of movies have been happening. I want to get you guys' reaction. Um, I think the biggest thing was Jesus Sucre. Well, I don't know where we are. Did we talk about Mike Wright? Did that happen last week? That was last week, I think. No. I don't know. We didn't talk about Mike Wright because I texted uh, Matt. Oh, yeah. Josh, Josh was last texts week. me every time someone talks to Mike Wright. Again, I'll reiterate this. I don't, I don't care. I, don't text, I know that you love Mike Wright. <laughs> I don't care what happens to Mike Wright. Though, though he was traded to Seattle, which I was like, that doesn't make sense. 
Are you guys uh, bemoaning the fact that Mike Wright didn't clear waivers or that we didn't keep Mike Wright in the minors? No, he can go do his I'm a junior, I'm not a junior game over there in Seattle now. How's that work? He, uh, he, yeah, you, we put him on waivers and he cleared waivers, so we had to take him back, so then we just traded him? No, I think – no, no. When, when you put a guy on waivers, you have like a week to, to trade him um, bef- oh, before okay. he goes through. And so we found a trade partner in Seattle, so, and they gave us some minor leaguer. Um, but weirdly, just today, we picked up um, a guy named Sean Armstrong, a reliever from the Mariners, who they just DFA'd. So we're swapping like bad pitchers, us and the Mariners. Right. So that's so it, it tells you that the Mariners have the same problem we have. No pitching. Yeah, and so we think change the scenario. They think that they can fix right and maybe we can fix Armstrong. I right, right. We all think we can find the next Jake Arrieta. Guy just dumped yeah. that doesn't work out, that suddenly he's gonna have magic in the next team. Right. And we, we have a history of uh, you know, doing that with pitchers. So why wouldn't they do it? I'm being facetious. <laughs> Also, yeah. the the Orioles are now doing this thing, which um, uh, Buck Showalter and Dan Duquette were the kings of, um, the Norfolk mm-hmm. Shuffle, where they just bring pitchers the Shuttle. Up. The Norfolk Shuttle. Oh, yeah, Shuttle. The, not the shuttle. Norfolk Shuttle. shuttle that, was that was the Cupid Shuffle. Else. That's a little dance. Cha-cha, y'all. That, that's the seventh inning stretch. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a dance that goes with the Turn Norfolk Shuttle. I, I, but I it's think called the Norfolk Shuffle. I, I think it's time for a video. It's time for you to teach us the Norfolk Shuffle. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll teach you guys that later. But they don't know how to use it right. So someone needs Dan Duquette or Buck Showalter. They need to sit down and, and talk to, to Manager Hyde about how to use the Norfolk Shuttle. Because they shuttled up a pitcher named Luis Ortiz, but they didn't use him today. Then they shuffled him back down. I mean, shuttled him back down. So they brought him up. Had him sit in the bullpen and then send him back down. No, you're supposed to call him up, throw him till his arms throws off, falls off, then send him back down. So they called a guy up just to uh, sit on the bench and get the nice stipend for being a major leaguer for a day, then send him back down. So they need to work on how, how to use him. Um, but they also called up Brandon Klein. Um, they sent Jimmy Yacobonis to the minors. Uh, was that are you guys okay with Jimmy Yacobonis? He's shown some good stuff, but um, has issues with location, hasn't shown much consistency. Are you guys okay with Jimmy Yacobonis getting sent down? I'm okay. You can send down whoever you want. I don't care. Whatever it takes. Yeah, this is a stupid question. Are you okay with the Orioles sending one of their pitchers who can't get guys out down to the minors? Uh, I don't know. Are you are you okay with the ugly lineup they put out there today? I'll tell you what, our, it was it was a Sunday lineup of all Sunday lineups. I'll tell you what, and, and you combine Trey Mancini. Who I tell you what, what a stud, what a stud this Trey Mancini is, um, and thankfully the injury seems like it's not that bad. He missed today. Yeah. So what happened was, is he hurt his finger, um, and here's here's according to according to the Baltimore Sun, um, after he got he said um, um, uh, uh, the ball ricocheted off his his knuckle right. Um, and it was, it was, it was ruled a foul ball. This is when he's at the plate. And he said about, he said, I couldn't feel my uh-huh. finger whatsoever. So I wasn't really sure what happened. Mancini said he released the ball in the spin, looked like the breaking ball I saw earlier. And obviously it wasn't, I just kept my swing going and it took it off my finger. Not ideally what you're trying to do up there. Um, and then later, well, just from some more context, the injury happened on a one, two pitch, right? Manc- Mancini continued his at bat, and the reason he con- con- continued that his, his at bat was he didn't want the Twins to have time to review the play because the ball never actually hit the bat, hit his finger, and it would have been a strikeout. So he stayed up there because he swung at it. Yeah, because he swung at it, and they ruled it a foul right. ball, but really hit his finger, so it should have been a strikeout. It was one and two count. Oh, you, you can't get a foul ball off your finger. No, no, you just can't hit your arm and hit the ball, um, or your finger. Um, but okay. he ended up staying up there, fouling a bunch of pitches off, and then hitting a single with with the bum finger that 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 he couldn't feel. So just uh, mm-hmm. Trey Mancini, he's a tough guy. Well, yeah, we we also learned this week that Trey Mancini is the leader of the biker of the scooter gang. <laughs> did you see this article going around? Because like there's that. nothing else yeah. to write about the Orioles. No, is no, this got to have some positive stuff. Is this like similar to, Dar- to Darren O'Day and his uh, what was it Segway or whatever he had? Well, yeah, but the difference is it's all those electric scooters, you know? Yeah. 
You know, like we, like you, everyone's ridden them around. We, we took a tour around the stadium with them. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the the players have them, and they all show up and they ride them to to the stadium together, and they're they're calling themselves a little scooter gang. But you have to own your own to be in a scooter gang. You can't use one of the mm-hmm. rentals. So some of the players have the rentals. They're not allowed in the scooter mm-hmm. gang. Right. You have to own your and, own. And I think I heard they're going to get vests. Right. And was it Givens <laughs> who has a scooter that's got a seat on it? And Because he, he was saying that's a more impressive scooter, which <laughs> I don't know. That makes me think of the scooters I see at like Target. <laughs> With the little shopping cart in the front. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but you can certainly, there's an opportunity to bling but, up those scooters a little bit. So I would definitely take advantage of blinging up those scooters if you had your own. Right. I just, I'm waiting for the injury, the scooter related injury, so they got to shut down the fun. Because this is a bunch of 20 somethings. We, we played on the scooters for like 30 minutes. If we had it for another hour, one of us was going to try to jump some stairs or something. Yeah, or hit a car. Oh, I, def- I had a scooter accident in D.C. We talked about that before. Yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure next year, whenever they sign any players in the contract, there'll be something about scooter riding. Or, or you know what's going to happen. When Strumbo come off, oh, ER, yeah. When Trumbo's IR, back, there goes the scooter guy. Trumbo's back. Scooters are getting shut down. Someone's <laughs> slashing tires. <laughs> Oh, oh, I thought you meant like an unfortunate scooter accident to get him back on the on the IL. Yeah, maybe if he tries to shut down the scooter gang. <laughs> right, you don't want to you don't want to face off they, against they, the they scooter gang. They could send gang. a message. Yeah, absolutely. Don't want to mess with them. Um, hey guys, Austin Williams caught up again. So we don't care about the pitchers. Um, do we care about Susan Cray? I got distracted. So do, do we, we care, care about, about catcher? catchers? He's DFA. He'll probably. I I don't know if another team will pick him up or not. I don't know. Um, but they called up Austin wins. Um, it said a Sucre. I thought Sucre was kind of, he was enthusiastic, kind, yeah. of, kind of passionate. I kind of liked uh, Sucre. Anytime you have someone in your team named Jesus, that that's always fun. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> sure. I mean, I, I guess we, we want to see, a, we want to see a little bit of Austin wins because we want to know if we have any catchers in the system. For the, for the future, and I mean, we've heard about Austin Wins and everything, so why yeah, not? Yeah, supposed see to be him. good defensively. Um, a little older, it's been in the minors for a while, so you like to see guys who are a little bit older get rewarded um, by call-ups, and especially guys who've been in the organization for a long time like Austin Wins. So you're saying he's just a placeholder, not a guy we can count on? I mean, I guess, but, well, yeah, he is a placeholder, because you know who are, who's going to be our catcher in the future is when we win the World Series, who's our catcher? Uh, the, Quick the question: Who's our catcher when we win the, the guys are going to draft this season? Who's yeah, that? That's who's right. that kid? Andy Rushman. Yeah, Rushman. Um, I, 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 Adley Rushman. Yeah, he, he. Um, I keep saying Adley Rushman. Yeah, he's going to be our catcher future because um, Chance Cisco, by the way, who people were clamoring, yeah. knuckleheads like me were clamoring to make the open day roster, is batting a, a buck eighty down in AAA, a buck eighty. So he's not getting caught up anytime soon. No, and, um, and this Rushman kid is college ball. So he should be ready a lot quicker. Yeah, he is tearing up. Yeah, last four games, um, he went 10 for 20 with seven RBIs and a home it's run. It's pretty good. It's pretty good, I yeah. guess. Yeah. So, like he, I, I think I think he could jump straight to triple A with those numbers. Yeah, those are like high school numbers, but he's doing it in college. Um, so, yeah, he's going to be close to majorly ready when we draft him. I'd be shocked if we don't draft him number one at this point. I think it's becoming more and more clear. When's the draft? A so, couple weeks? Having. June? Uh, June. Like the, I think like the first week in June. All right. Not yeah, so that's far. the next date to 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 look at. I tell you what, guys. Minnesota, you know it's bad when guys like Byron Buxton are hitting home runs off you. Uh, Dylan Bundy gave up four runs in five innings. When we played right. Minnesota Two. like a week ago, they hitting home runs left and right. Now we play them again. I mean, we they hit so many home runs. Alex Cobb, Alex Cobb was embarrassing watching him give up what back to back home runs. Yep. Um, and I saw Joey Rickard just drop one in center field too. He's a bum. I'm just there's a lot of I saw, bums out there. I guess you missed Villar today. Catch one and it popped right out of his glove. Oh, I missed that. It went in his glove. He closed his glove and somehow he squeezed it out. This is unbelievable. That's what. Yeah. I don't, do you guys see the Joey Rickard error? The Joey Rickard one. He like there wasn't a moment where like um, the announcer was like, well maybe he turned around too many times to see where the wall was, but he didn't. Like he was looking at the wall the entire time. And it just like dropped right in front of him. Like it wasn't even like he lost it. He was just looking at it and whoop, there it goes right in front of him. Um, so the the defense, 
Arizona hasn't been great. Um, the pitching gives up so many dongs, it's ridiculous. And you take Trey Mancini out of, the, out of the offense. Well, at least we have Renato Nunez who can hit. But, oh, by the way, Renato Nunez goes 0 for 4 today with four strikeouts. How you like that? Well, everyone's Apples? got a bad day. Uh, at what point is Bundy done? Bundy Dundee. Like, could you, do you see any chance of him being what we expected, Matt? Oh, no, yeah. I mean, but he's – you say done. I mean, he's still just he, – Like no. done, like we got to get him out of our rotation. He's not a guy that's going to work. Not anytime soon because he's just going to pitch out the rest of this. As long as he stays healthy, they're probably just going to keep putting him out there. Yeah, I mean, we saw David Hess was demoted to the bullpen. It, la- it lasted two days. Then he was called to start again because Alex Cobb's hurt. Um, if we had other options or if we were trying to compete, you would not see Dylan Bundy start another baseball game <laughs> um, for the Orioles. But the fact so maybe it's time for the Scooter Gang to get involved. Well, no, because if if Dylan Bundy went down, who would start in his place? Someone from Triple A. Yeah, there's no one who's knocking down the door. D- Dylan Tate's embarrassing. I mean, the the best. I think the closest good pitcher we have is Alex Wells at Bowie. Alex Wells, who throws 92 miles per hour, but tears it up at every level that 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 he plays at. Um, right, but he just got to Bowie. He was in single yeah, A yeah, last year. Yeah, he's not year. ready. So, I mean, all our best pitchers are in single A, um, um, and Alex Wells in double A. But most of our best pitchers are in single A. So the answer is we have no one. So Dylan Bundy will start every game of the of the year, uh, or every fifth day, almost as punishment for him for sucking so bad. You suck so bad, go out there every fifth day and suck. Um, to drive it into your head how much you suck. And then when we're good again, Dylan Bundy will get here. I mean, maybe you could find a sucker for a trade partner with that remembers Dylan Bundy as being this highly touted guy and they'll take and they'll take him off your hands for a bag of peanuts. Right. Like we need to put right, like throw him down with like a groin injury or something that we can blame, oh, the whole season is because of this groin injury. Yeah. And trade if him. I was another team, if I was another team, I would take that bet after you've seen what's happened with guys like Arietta and Galsman finding success with other teams. If we're, if we're going to give them away for something cheap, I would. If I was another team, I'd give it a shot. Yeah, I saw Kevin Gosman gave up like five runs and in three innings today against the Rockies. I, I, but I think that was true under the old regime. I don't know, Bert, if that's true anymore when Mike Elias and everyone's using all this technology. If they're if they still think the Orioles don't know how to how to you know get the best of a pitcher, right? How how bad are you? Then speaking of Mike Wright, how bad did he have to be for them to say there's nothing we can do? We yeah. can't fix you. We have to get let you go. Yeah, I mean, this is an organization that says we can fix Chris Davis and try to fix Chris Davis, but they said Mike Wright. And, nah. and, it, nah. and it looks like they have. It looks like yeah, they I did tell fix you what, Chris Davis. Chris Davis goes what one for two with a walk and a dong today. But I tell you what, Chris Davis playing well. I got news for you guys. I was I was saying this since week one. Chris Davis plays well, we still lose. It doesn't well, yeah, yeah. matter. No. We because we can't trade him. If he plays well, we can't trade him. If he plays bad, we can't trade him. It doesn't matter this year if he plays well or not. But it's a lot more fun to watch him if he plays well, and hopefully whatever they fix this year can carry on to next year. Where it still doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, you hope it can carry on. Well, maybe in two years because he's still going to be with the team if he's playing right, well. Right. So maybe, yeah, then. Uh, though I, I found it pretty entertaining to watch the 0 for 64. So I don't Agreed. Know. Yeah, that was more entertaining than an occasional hit. <laughs> yeah. No, but since then, he's batting like 300 and he's got a few dongs. Yeah, he's over 300 since, since then. then. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And Josh plays this game every week. Will he pass the guy's batting average? Josh, no, I he... don't. I, I played this game on once for you because you and I had a conversation, and then he passed Cedric Mullins in like two days, so they had to send Cedric <laughs> so, Mullins. So Chris down. Davis's batting average is the bar but for I'm, everyone else. What's he? What's he at? He's at like he's at like one seventy, one eighty now, something like no, that. No, one sixty. You and you. He's at one fifty nine. All right. Did he pass anyone? Because if so, we got to cut him. No, this week. There was talk that he could pass Richie Martin, um, but Richie Martin has 169. Oh, see, the pressure got on the Martin. And Davis has 156. And he got a hit. The pressure was on Martin today. He got a hit. Yeah. Because, yeah, you, you, Chris Davis passes you, you get mm-hmm. cut. That's the rule. Saw it in the clubhouse. Yeah, and Joey Rickard isn't far behind at 205. So, got to 
Get with it, people. At least today's game went fast. That's the only... At this point, you just hope the game goes fast and that no position players have to yeah. pitch. Um, I mean, so we traded Mike Wright last week, but that was really for nothing. You think that we're going to... And then news yeah. came out yesterday or today that the Orioles have been taking calls on um, Michael Givens. So uh, the Orioles are clearly in place yeah. where they're trying to trade people now. So you think we're trading Villar or Nunez or Mancini, any of these guys that are having decent years? Um, you, th- you think those guys are still here in July, August? Our pitching staff has been poor. We haven't, we can't trade anyone from the pitching staff. How are we going to get more young guys? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's the problem, right? Dan Duquette and uh, Michael Elias knew this. Dan Duquette traded all the best players away. Yeah, he he dumped it all out to try to win. Well, no, no. Didn't I'm saying work. even last year to start the rebuilding process. Yes. Yeah. Including he, like Kevin Gossman, he, who could have came back and could have been traded. He traded them all. Yeah. He went He went all out for Victor Victor. It didn't work. So all those trades for international money were crap. The only trade that was good out of all that was scope for Villar. The only, oh, no, no. I think, I think the Machado uh, was good. Okay, the Machado I, got I, some I, decent pitching back. And that young kid who's in Bowie. Yes. Diaz. Yeah, and I think the jury's still out with um all right, so Ga- the Yankees. All right, and, so you're just gonna, so you're just calling Gaussman a failure. Yeah, because Gaussman was the one that involved a lot of the international. Yeah, money. and it was a money dump to try to dump O'Day's salary. Yeah, and I hate that. Yep. I'd rather eat money and get prospects than right the other way around. But no, I think the biggest one in that bunch, like Michael Gibbons, they're gonna try to trade him. Jonathan Vr, they're gonna try to trade him. Trey Mancini, I don't know because he's young enough. Um, I mean, he's 27. He could be part of the future in three years. He's really good. I don't know about Trey Mancini. Yeah, but here's the problem with Trey Mancini. The problem with Trey Mancini is that he doesn't have a position of need for the Orioles. Uh, We're already grooming Ryan Mountcastle as the first baseman for the Orioles. So you don't need uh, you don't need him at Trey Mancini at first base. We've got a plethora of outfielders coming up, so that you're going to think have better defensive metrics than uh, Trey Mancini. So do you really keep Trey Mancini around as your DH? Yeah, I mean def- you're right. Defensively, there's some better guys coming, but offensively, there's no one who can touch Trey Mancini. Nah, uh, maybe Mount Castle. Okay, yeah, maybe Mountcastle, but I'm talking about those outfielders. I don't see any of those outfielders as being offensively what even Austin Hayes, I don't see him being what Trey Mancini is. I mean, right now, Trey Mancini is one of the best hitters in baseball, and I don't think yeah. he's replaceable, easily replaceable. He's not a free agent till 2023. Um, also, I don't know if this would be like peak value for Trey Mancini because last year he was bad. So right. our team's right. going to say you had a good half year we want to give up. Like maybe it'd be better to have him have a good full year than this off season. Look at trading him. Or they're going to look and say, look how good he is now. We need a guy now to get, in. it depends what you're playing. Are you trading a, a, to a team for a long-term fix? Or are you trading in a team that needs one more bat to get into the playoffs or the world series this year? That's how you get to someone to overpay for someone who's having a good season. Yeah. But also the thing that's so attractive, yeah. this is what people organizations are obsessed with player control. And the thing that makes Trey Mancini so attractive is he's under con- team control till 2023. Yeah. Of course, we don't know what's going to happen with the next collective bargain agreement and how that's going to affect player control. Yeah. Um, it's true. But right now, he's making no money, and he's a great player. And there's a lot of right. teams who could use a guy that doesn't hurt your salary and also is a big contributor. So I'm like, if I'm Michael Elias, I'm like, the phone line's open for Trey Mancini. But there's also not like we have to move him. Um, where I feel like Villar, you have to move him. Michael Gibbons, like, you kind of have to move him. Let's go on for Michael Gibbons. Tired of the trade talks, Michael Gibbons. Find a decent offer and move him. That's how I also feel about um, but Villar. But Trey Mancini, I'm more like only if you get the right deal. Um, that's kind of how I feel on it. He could be the grizzled veteran DH for the World Series team in five years. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Sign me up for that. Um, but 
I'm okay. And we're going to come in here and we're going to criticize the orders and we're going to say that pitching sucks and the hitting actually sucks. And it does. And we're going to complain about how bad the orders are. But like, whatever. Right. Like, we knew this was going to happen. Right? Um, we're all okay with it. It doesn't be, It doesn't mean though, like, I saw Ken, Ken Wyman tweet that people, like, why are Oro fans upset? They knew what, you know, was going to happen this year. Like, fine. Like, we can know and recognize and understand their Orioles are going to lose. But it also sucks to watch them lose, right? And we can kind of complain and be upset and angry about it. We don't have to be happy about them losing. Like, I accept it and I get it. I understand it's part of the process. I'm on board. Caution what floor. But I'm still going to be annoyed and angry when they lose. You know what? I would just like them to, uh, next Saturday we've got tickets. If you could win that game, Orioles, I have not seen a win <laughs> win yet at home. I would like to go, and I've already been to three games. We're th- we got three games under our belts and no wins. I'd like to see a win on Saturday. Well, you better hope John Means is starting. That's all I got to say. But He's starting tomorrow, so maybe he'll be back by Saturday, right? That's five days. <laughs> Do the that is five days. Yeah, that could work out. Because that's really the only scenario where you see a win in Orioles baseball right now is if John Means start Or Kashner. He's been winning a lot of games, actually. So you got to see okay. Means or Kashner. But the Orioles do have Thursday off, so that could affect things. So Means oh, might be no. a Sunday guy. Oh, no. Oh, well, crap. But with Cobb hurt, you think they'd just skip that day and keep Means on pace for Saturday. So let's hope. Because you're right. Means is the only arm that's fun to watch right now. Yeah. Yeah, and he's a great story because he was not great last year, and he's really worked on that changeup, and he's gotten better. And I don't know how much of that's the Saber metrics and how much of it's him just getting better. Um, but John Means is kind of the one success story that we've seen in the pitching staff thus far. Like for all the analytics and for Zach Britton getting traded, oh, oh, there's so much more information up here in New York. For all that information that Orioles pitchers are getting, no. The only one who's really improved has been John Means. None of the other pitchers have right. really gotten a lot better. Right? And, I, I mean, it's not like, like I'm not surprised. Like, the pitchers aren't good. But it's also not like like Zach Britton gets all this information and all of a sudden he turns into an all-star. Zach, Zach Britton was better when he was with us. Um, it's not just about information. Like, you still have to be able to go out there and, and be good at your job. And so – um, the fact that Mike Elias is here and Sigma Dell is here, it doesn't turn Dylan Bundy into the guy he always should have been. It doesn't turn, you know, Miguel Castro into the, the guy we think he can be. Because, I mean, these pitchers, who, 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 they are who they are. It doesn't matter how much information they get if you're not making good pitches. That's all I got to say about that. Though, um, we can make an argument that this has been a really good year for the Orioles if you look into the minors – because, again, this season's about getting more talent and becoming better than what you started with. And there's guys like Grayson Rodriguez and D.L. Hall that are having really good years in the minors. Alex Wells, we talked about before. Um, there's a whole crop of pitchers, specifically starting pitchers in the minors. I mean, the Marva Shorebirds have the best record in all the minors right now. They're tearing it up. Um, right. And so there's something to, to, to be said about the young pitchers who will be here in three or four years, right? The Delmarva and Frederick Keys guys, they're having the most success so far you know, out of anyone in the organization. And that's kind of how you want, who you want to have success if you're rebuilding, because they're going to be here in three and four years when you, when, when you want to be good again. So that's, so you could argue like some good things are happening, even if it's not the major league spot. And that's what we said to be start with season. We're going to look for what's happening in the minors a lot. And that's why we're doing night at the yard this year during the day in Bowie. So Father's Day, come hang out with us at the and Bay. the Bay Sox. Tickets are $10. You get to play catch on the field beforehand. You get a Bay Sox beer glass. Uh, we get to throw out the first pitch and uh, lots of cool stuff. Great seats right behind home plate. All of us 336ers uh, three, three, will be sitting together in one section. Get your tickets now with the link on section336.com. Right at the top it says Father's Day with 336. Nice. Come join us. Bring the family. 10 bucks. Uh, great family experience out at my I got my tickets. I got my tickets. Already printed and everything. Really? Nice. I have not printed mine yet. Hopefully they take digital <laughs> or I'm going to have to find a printer somewhere. Uh, Adam, <laughs> I'm going to need your help if you could print some stuff out for me. 
But uh, it's cool. We're the three of us kind of spread ourselves out in that section so that we can hang out and uh, talk to you three three sixers. Yeah, 